Gay people have read it, what's the hardest part about being gay? Coming out every day. It's not a once of thing. Like when you start a new job or make new friends, based in an Arab country. Being seen as the embodiment of sin and the downfall of morality when all I do is eat McDonald's and watch It's Always Sunny. The fear of being a victim of a hate crime and having basic human rights denied. Rollerblading. It's hell on the ankles. It's lonely. Especially if you're not an extrovert or mainstream gay person. Growing up being taught by your family and society that being gay was evil and disgusting. And everyone in school using gay as an insult. Growing up thinking there is something inherently evil about you and you will suffer for eternity because you were born. The expectations to conform to the larger gay community, even if it doesn't match your morals or beliefs at all. Hookup culture is a son of a botch. Police officers of Reddit, who's the smartest criminal you've ever encountered? The story goes like this, a homeowner walks out one morning to drive to work only to find his car missing. He reports the car stolen to the police. A few days later his car is sitting back in front of his house. When he gets inside he finds a note. It was an apology that said the thief was in dire need of quick transportation and so he borrowed the first car he found with the keys inside. The writer noticed the sticker on the car for the local sports team and just so there were no hard feelings he left four tickets to an upcoming game in the glove box for the homeowner and his family. So the homeowner and his family attend the game but when they return home they find the house has been ransacked and all items of value are gone. What's your most shameful not safe for work moment? I was once extremely drunk and staying in a very expensive hotel in Hollywood. I went to bed, as I should. I woke up in the middle of the night and had to pee. I walked through the bathroom door and closed it behind me. I then realized that that wasn't the bathroom door, but rather the room door. I was locked out of my room in a fancy hotel, drunk off my ass, wearing only my underwear. I went to the elevator lobby where there was a phone and called the front desk and explained my situation. They said they would send someone up. I realized I couldn't wait and continued searching for a place to pee and found a janitor closet with a rolling mop bucket in it. I took a giant piss in the mop bucket and then walked back to my room door, where a bellhop who really didn't want to look me in the eye let me back into my room. I'm very sorry, Mondrian Hotel. When I was 12 my younger sister walked in on me playing Fondle the Dungle. I told her I couldn't pee and was trying to force slash pump it out. She told my mom out of worry. Said I needed a doctor to help me pee. When mom confronted me about what my sister was saying I then had to explain it to her. My dad caught me editing the game files of The Sims to replace the female underwear textures with underwear that just makes them look nude. Looked up reference material and edited them in Photoshop. That a lot of effort to put into something so depraved. When I was around 13 years old. My brother walked into me trying to suck my own dick. Upside down. Butt in the air. Hunched over. What's the creepiest or most unexplained thing you've seen in broad daylight? In the 80s my dad was in the Peace Corps and lived in Sierra Leone for three years. He had a motorcycle and would ride around the roads when he had free time. One day he's riding a dirt road that snakes around a small mountainside or hillside past some construction works. About half a mile after the road work he sees a man on the side of this dirt road on the mountain just laughing his butt off, and he was blue. Not like painted blue, but blue. At first my dad rode on, thinking nothing of it. And then it sunk in. That he saw a blue dude sitting on the side of a dirt road laughing wildly. He turned around and rode back to where he saw the blue dude and there was nothing there. He kept retracing his path beyond the road work and never saw the blue guy again. Later that day he went back to the village he was living in at the time and told the locals about what he had seen. The locals all laughed and said, no you didn't. White men can't see devils. What do girls never tell guys? Our favorite bra doesn't get washed as much. When I wear my hair in certain ways it means I've not gotten the chance to wash it in a while. Randomly you're just sitting there and a bunch of pussy juice decides to come out for no reason and it feels like you pissed yourself but you just gotta act like nothing happened. Specifically what was discussed in the bathroom. When we are on our period we can feel when a clot of blood comes out but we don't randomly tell you guys because it might ruin the current conversation. My wife confirmed a post I saw a while back on Reddit that I never knew. Apparently when a 
girl farts sometimes the fart rolls into their vagina instead of backwards. You'll never be the same now. The tampon box in the closet is where I hid the good chocolate. Sometimes when we pee we get more than one pee stream just like you. That many men have been blessed with perfectly thick long luscious eyelashes and us girls are a bit jelly of that fact. The reason why we don't want you to go down on us. Usually it's because we don't feel clean. How much blood comes out in the jelly-like stuff during our periods? Hormones not only mess with us during our period but they mess us up the week before too. Premenstrual hormones for me anyway almost affect me more than the hormones during the cycle. We hold our boobs when running down the stairs. Doctors, what was the best excuse you've heard for someone having something stuck in their ass? Had a guy with a screwdriver up their handle first. He was honest, said the wife wanted to try something new. Why the screwdriver? Something shaped like a sausage would have been gay. I always thought that was a real weird place to draw the line. What's a life-saving tip everyone should know? In a nuclear explosion, most of the damage and death is caused by the shockwave the blast creates, not the fireball which has a comparatively small radius. One day you may find yourself outside or looking out a window to see an extremely bright flash. As bright as if you were staring straight at the sun. Do not attempt to locate the source of the flash. You have maybe 8 to 10 seconds to respond if you're far enough away from the fireball. Lay face down on the ground and put your thumbs in your ears and fingers over your eyes. Breathe through your teeth. Since you're laying face down the shockwave will mostly pass over you. If you're standing up it can cause your lungs, eardrums, and other organs to explode. Once the shockwave passes over you, you need to find shelter immediately. I said before that most death from the explosion is caused by the shockwave. Well, far more death is subsequently caused by nuclear fallout after the blast. Do not attempt to travel anywhere. Just get underground. If you're next to a complete stranger's house or a business, don't hesitate to go inside and hide out under as much concrete and steel as possible. You need to remain in this location for the next 48 hours. This is critical. Even if you survive the blast if you attempt to go home and spend just 20 minutes outside traveling you will more than likely die of radiation sickness. Radioactive material after a blast decays exponentially, and you will be safe to try and find your loved ones after 48 hours. If you don't wait this out, you definitely won't be alive to find them. What do all men have in common? Slapping the top of a doorway. You guys want to go dig a hole. Throwing the big rock into lake will entertain all of us. Agree. Also, that is a nice stick. I'm going to pick it up now. The nod is universal. Test clicking the barbecue tongs to see if they still work. The urge to wince when another man gets kicked in the nuts unless he deserved it. I feel the urge either way, even if I'm muttering that he had it coming. Booty hair. My grandma walked in on me in the bathroom with my cheeks in the air trying to cut my booty hair with scissors. How did she manage to hide her break up? We've all tried it. It's simple, really. We see a big rock. We move it. We all can agree on kissing the homies good night. They are swift as the coursing river, have all the force of a great typhoon, have all the strength of a raging fire, and are mysterious as the dark side of the moon.